Okay, FPO. Krista Tatar dominates the field without her A game. I think that's the big score storyline. If you watch her play the, all four rounds, yes, there were signs of her playing well here and there, but she wasn't she wasn't dialed in. She she had some bad shots. She missed some putts. It wasn't like she was playing incredible. She I, she would tell you that she didn't play that great, and she dominated. It, I mean, it was. It was over after the front nine on the final round. And I think the big issue that FPO is having is we've seen this dominance in other sports before, but it's still been entertaining to watch because there's always been someone like someone always comes and you're like, Oh, are they going to be able to knock her down or not? Are they going to be able to knock him down? And I think right now when Kristen Tatar enters a tournament, I don't know, Yuli. I don't think anyone can beat her. I don't think anyone's even getting close. And so, like to she me, is, it makes to she, me it makes it like not that exciting to watch. She's gonna lose this year. She will lose to somebody. Okay. But it's gonna be a long season for the FPO field, man. Bro, <laughs> she might not lose, dude. But I mean, judging statistically, she's going to end up. To, she's gonna end up losing. Like, did you hear what happened too? Like she almost didn't even show up to this tournament because she had visa issues. Yeah. Like they, they got in super late. They had to do two practice rounds each day. She said she like got into the tournament super sore because she played way more than she wanted to. And uh, yeah, she, I mean, I think Ella Hansen took, got a good start. And then Kristen, I think like took 11 shots or something on her in round three, like something ridiculous. This is her 19th disc golf pro tour win, including majors. She just got rated 999. I don't know if she'll ever hit a thousand, but she probably will. Um, I posted a tweet too that said the only person I was trying to say the only person that can beat Kristen this year is Kristen. Like basically meaning like if she like beats herself, but I wrote Kirsten and maybe that's it. Maybe we need Kirsten. Maybe Kirsten is the only one that can beat Kristen. So if there's a Kirsten out there that plays disc golf, by all means, start signing up to this. Um, Valerie, I think Val does a decent job as a commentator. Again, like no one's going to be perfect if you're on there talking three, four hours. I mean, we're on here talking for only three hours a week and we say all sorts of crazy stuff. But Val said one of the dumbest things I've ever heard on coverage. She said Haley King birdied a hole um, and basically, uh, or she, sorry, Haley King birdied a couple holes in a row. And Val, after birdied a couple, after her, she birdied a couple holes in a row, Val goes, all right, Haley King owns, uh, controls her own destiny. She was down five strokes to the best player in the world ever. That, that's the exact opposite of controlling your own desk. You have no control. The control is not in your hands at all. Like, like and then like a few, a few holes go by and like she's down by eight. Like, it's like, I get it. You're trying to build a storyline. But it's like everyone at FPO is like, please, Kristen, mess up. Because that's like the only chance I have. So I thought, I don't know. I, I heard that and I was just like, that, that's wild. That's the exact opposite. Um, there was a tweet to me addressing that Missy Gannon cheated on live coverage. I, I looked into it. Uh, I, I get why some people are upset. It kind of goes back to what you were saying, Yuli, where you know, you walk up to a spot and you don't agree with the spotter or you're like, I saw it this way and you, and you take the benefit of the doubt or whatever. I think no one, I think what the situation was is that no one could see the spot on the card. And I think they gave her a good spot where if you watched it on coverage, like it never crossed. It was like one of those situations. I don't know if that's, I, I have a hard time believing that's blatantly cheating um, the hall and Haley. No, you, no, no, I'll stop right there because yeah. here's, here's the, here's the alternative. She crosses and she doesn't get the spot. Yep. Then it's just, then it's just disc golf. Come on. Yeah. It's All tough. right. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I think this is a completely yeah, different silly. situation than hall and Hanley. Hall and Hanley could see her shot the entire time. So like that one, I, I had a little more pushback on Holland of like whether or not she thought she was in where this, it seemed like it was a blind shot for everyone. So like no one had any idea. Um, and it's, it's actually very similar to what happened to me on hole 18 at, at the beast. I threw my shot 
And as I was walking up to like the water to like throw another shot over, cause I, I came up short. Um, we were kind of like trying to like signal to the spotter over there. Like, did I cross or not? And he like pointed at the ground and I was like, I guess that means I cross. And we went up there and he's like, your disc definitely crossed. So I get it. Like you have to kind of sometimes work with the spotter, but I'm also with you too, of where it's like, if you, I don't know, man, it's tough. It's, it's, well, it's a tough situation. This is the problem is because people who see it from their couch or people who see it from afar and you're playing against somebody and they go, no, you didn't do it. Well, what about when you do? What yes. about when you do that happens all the time, dude, that where I more absolutely, often. absolutely cross and there's nobody to say it. And then, you know, maybe I don't even think I cross and I'm, I'm now back here a hundred feet or something. So it's okay when it doesn't benefit the player for the audience or for the field, but it's not okay when, when sometimes it goes the opposite way. Like that's not how disc golf works. And that's why we have a rule, a rule in the rule book that says benefit goes to the player. People have to understand the rule doesn't say kinda Mm -hmm. kinda goes to the player. It's that that's, this is a rule. The same as you having to show up five minutes before your tea time. This is a rule that we have. So you use it. So talking a little bit about like the Chris and the tar, how to make F- FPL a little bit more uh, engaging to watch. I think one of the big things is like some of the top contenders, they have to try to figure out parts of their game because yeah. to me right now, the two, the two, the three names that jump out at me as potentially having the best chance to beat Kristen, Holland Hanley, Ella Hansen, and probably Missy Gannon. I think Evelina shows a little bit like, I don't know what happened with her this week. Evelina showed a little bit at chess invitational, but like these are all three top players and they all had big met like big meltdowns. I would call you have henna right here four putt. Go ahead. You have a fifth. I have five people. You got Evelina. Yes. You have Colin Hanley. Yes. You have Ella. Yes. Okay. Missy. And yep. you can't sleep on own. Oh Yeah. Own, own for sure, but to me, own can only compete at courses that distance isn't that's a big fine, deal. But, that, yeah, but that's you're right. okay. You're right. Uh, but these are three top players as well that are trying to push, and these are some major issues that they need to figure Haley out. King. So we're we're gonna talk about Haley King in a second. Uh, this first this first clip is uh, Henna. I don't know if you caught this, Yuli. This is Henna, um, one of the best T to green plays. We might not have the clip. Do we not have the clip, Silas? Oh, here we go. Three holes left to play. Kristen and the blue card are back on hole 13. After such a great drive by Henna, she air. So this is the, I'm pretty sure all these putts are inside of 15 feet. She had, she has struggled on some, she has struggled some elevated baskets, but I mean, this is one of the best players T to green. I will have to see how Evelina continues. And we have a stat here from Edwin stats here. Evelina finished fourth because her putting regressed back to the mean. Her TD green was second to only Kristen and was close. Only one stroke. So she only lost one stroke to Kristen, but her putting kind of went back to not great. Hen is another person. If she can figure out her putting, she is four putted from 15 feet. You're not going to beat Kristen Tatar if you're four putting from 15 feet. Uh, another one, Paige Pierce. Now, granted, we can give her a little grace. She's coming back way sooner than I thought way sooner than I thought from an injury, but a part of Uh Paige's game is I think she sometimes is a little bit too aggressive and she ended up carding a 12 on hole 16 at Lake Waco. We can pull up the, um, pull up the thing. I think what ended up happening is she probably went OB early, right. And then just continued to try to throw like the hyzer over the OB the entire time. That's the only way I can think of, of you getting a 12 on that hole. But to me, that kind of goes to the aggressive play of like, if you go into a spot OB there, you can just pitch up 
take your bogey at worst and move on and live to fight another day. But to me, like a 12 there just kind of shows sometimes like, I think that's her biggest issue is like maybe the aggressiveness is like, she's sometimes just too over aggressive. And we don't really ever see that from Kristen. Kristen's kind of like, she kind of plays like a smart game and never really puts herself in that position. Last one. I wish we had the video of this. Yuli, they showed like a, it was like a highlight reel. And I thought it was like Haley King fainting. Like I thought she was like passing out or having issues because the way she was just like collapsing to the ground, they claimed that she had some sort of leg injury and being someone that's had multiple leg injuries. I never just like collapsed to the ground. I'm like soup. If I'm like trying to get to the ground and I have a leg injury, I'm like super gingerly getting to the ground. Um, it was weird. There was another, there was another clip where she was like limping to her lie, like limping, like to her lie, jump putts, and then runs in the putt. We might have some soccer theatrics going on over here. We might have some LeBron James of where like you get like a little hang nail and you like build it up. I don't know. Maybe some people like that. I don't know if that to me, that's kind of a turn off. Like I don't really love watching people play up injuries that aren't real injuries or whatever it may be. Um, but that's another person. Like a lot of people have talked about Haley King has all the talent in the world, throwing putting, but it's like up here, right? That's like what we've always talked about is like, can, can she figure it out up there? What are your thoughts on that? Those are three people that I think a lot of people would consider are pushing to, towards the top that kind of showed this past week, like big, big holes in their game. Yeah, I mean, you got to work on your putt, period. And they do. Here's the thing. I know that um, they both, Henna and Evelina, work on their game. They're putting constantly, constantly, constantly. The stroke has to change, you know? The stroke has to go from whatever they're doing now to something completely different. I'm a coach. I deal with this stuff all the time with a lot of people. This isn't going to get better over grinding the same putt over and over and over and over again, because there's so much baggage up here from With this that stroke mm. that when you get into a situation on the course, what happens is that anxiety and past memories from this stroke that you're trying to perfect come back. And those are more overwhelming than the moment. Mm. In my opinion, one of the only ways to get past this is drop the stroke and you don't have to completely abandon it. You don't, but you need to try something else for a while and then maybe go back to where the feelings subside, because this is not only a physical issue, it's a mental issue. And you have to work on both of those things. If you're constantly putting yourself and you're three putting like this, that three putt is going to be in your mind the next time you putt. And the next time after that, and the next time you, after that, and the next time after that, I went through the yips in 2012 where I couldn't make it from short, short distance. Cause I broke my wrist. I dropped the putt and I went to a different one and I wasn't yeah. a better putter, but I was you're, able you're to a great putter now though on tour, but I've, I have switched my putt so many times because anxiety would get in those strokes. And I would, I would be like, okay, the only way I can get past this is by completely switching and starting fresh. Because when you have a new putt that you're learning, when you miss, it's okay. Mm. It's okay. It's a new stroke. And when you make good putts, you can, now you have a good feeling, right? You have a good feeling moving forward. That would be my, that, when I look Great at device. them, putt, that's, that's what I would say is you have to completely get away from that because it's going to be too much to handle. <laughs> these, unfortunately, they're not playing these small tournaments. They're playing big tournaments. They're getting on lead cards where the pressure is crazy. My putt falls apart more in the final day than it does in the first day. Why? Everybody's does. Everybody, the pressure is higher. And the people who it doesn't fall apart, they win the tournament. It's yeah. not like Gannon is um, completely immune to that pressure. We've seen it with Isaac. We've seen it with Gannon. It gets harder and harder. And so when you already have this bad putt 
and then you're pushed into the highest of anxiety situations, bad memories slip in there and it's, it's just not going to work out. Yeah. That's good advice. Just change it up completely and start fresh. Um, talk about starting fresh Maria Oliva. Uh, I would love to still have her come on the show. I know she turned us down the first time I asked, but if she wants to come on the show, it'd be great. She ended up leaving. This is a crazy story. She ended up leaving all her discs in Dallas, which I'm currently in Dallas. It took me about an hour to hour and 45 minutes to get up here. I don't know what the situation was of like how she wasn't able to get the discs or like after playing round one with a new, cause they play in the morning, like why it wasn't possible for, I don't know. I don't know the story. I would love to know the story. I have no idea the story. All I know is she was playing with a new set of discs, didn't play well, and ended up DNFing. Not because of injury or anything like that, just... That's a crazy story. I don't Are know, you I, sure she wasn't injured? I'm pretty sure I watched an Instagram video of hers that she, she was not injured. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I don't, um, I don't, I don't like yeah. that, but yeah, it's it's a weird, it's a weird one. I I had to bring it up. A lot of people wanted me to give my take on it. My take is like, go up to Dallas and get your disc. That that would be my day, take. Is like after the, like, I get it. You something happened where you don't have them. My take would be like, figure out a way to go up and get the disc or pay someone to bring them down. Something I don't know. All right, moving on. Crazy, crazy. <laughs> 